It's another episode of the Sonic Truth Dynasty Focus Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm Alan Soslowski of rotowire.com, along with Theo Greminger. Cody Carpentier is back sitting in for the Podfather. And guys, we brought in uh, some of our friends, some heavy hitters, to compete in a very high-stakes mock draft. We have Thor Nystrom. Of course, we have Debro, Derek Brown, and our favorite, my favorite, your favorite, Actually, he's our least favorite, Cody. It's Pat Fitzmorris. How are you, Pat? 100% <laughs> least favorite. Yeah. Oh, doing great. Uh, look at this. This marriage between playerprofiler.com and fantasy pros. Uh, this is great. We we skipped the honeymoon, though. I think we should all spend a week together in Aruba just sitting on the beach and drinking Mai Tais. Yeah, yeah. And Thor, is this your first time appearing on the uh, Player Profiler Network, or have you been here before? I've been on with the Podfather before. That counts. That first, counts. First, first mock draft, though, and I'm excited to take down Debro in this thing. Yes. <laughs> Good luck. Good oh, luck. my God. Well, you guys are supposed to be, you know, teammates in this because, you know, we're going total score. And obviously, you know, oh. the winner, the um, it, th this is like we we're talking about a thousand a man for this draft. A thousand okay. a man. Debro, welcome back. You're always uh, a welcome smiley face on the player profile network. Um, as we're just uh, starting this draft, what do you think? You know, I get asked a lot, like, who do you think is going to bust in this year's rookie draft? Is there a... Uh, a metric or something in the rookie process that you pay attention to that indicates maybe I should be on high alert for a bust? Uh, I think there, it's, it's a combination of a few things. Um, I always love yards per route run, but if you want to go to the early career production metrics and you're using player profiler, so if we're looking at breakout age, we're looking at dominator ratings and stuff. I think they're all really stable metrics to look at for that. So um, I won't gaslight. Oh, the hell with it. Fitz, uh, yeah, you know where I'm going to go with this, right? You know the guy that I'm going to say is. Oh, don't say it. No tables. All right, we'll wait. We'll wait. No table talk. No table talk. Fitz knows where I'm at. Theo Greminger, you love every rookie, so there's no such things as busts in your world. <laughs> not, nece not necessarily, but I do have a very optimistic approach with this rookie class, and I want to get exposure to a lot of these guys. Big shout out to uh, to Pat and Debro. This is back to back years of doing a Sonic Truth rookie draft with us, and welcome to Thor. It's actually my first time potting with Thor, so I'm really looking forward to this one. And a big shout out to Cody, two weeks in a row right here on the Sonic Truth Podcast. A lot of knowledge in this room, but I'm still planning on having the best uh, mock draft of all of you guys. Oh, Before man. I get to you, Cody, here, you know, we all were excited here to be with Thor for the first time. But I think this is like the least highlight of his week. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Diva's going to Diva. What can I say? He's already capped. say that. He's already tapping on his watch saying, let's hurry this shit up. All right. It's already, already, already in the comment section being like, guys, let's get a move on. Yeah. All right. Cody, before I explain the rules, uh, tell everybody uh, you've been on the road already at these pro days. Um, what's it like uh, masturbating in a hotel room with nobody around? It's actually, you know, you get different types of lotions by yourself. <laughs> a lot of TV options. Depends on what you kind of eat. It, it also can change the game. If you have, you know, you have some spicy chicken wings at night or if you have burgers, it all depends. And it, and it kind of be careful. A lot of things go into that sauce as well. Yeah. You, yeah, you could no, be I, like Alan and have Brady Bunch on repeat. Yep. Yep. Totally. I mean, come on. Everyone needs a good Alice. No, Cody, you're always a good sport. Thank you for putting up with me on my very uh, non-professional thing. But guys, this is how we're going to do it. Um, super flex tight end premium. We're just, there's six of us. So we're just going to snake it through. It's more about like, who do we like? Who is the draft order? You can give your explanation. You can crap on anyone's picks that you want. We want to get good feedback because anyone listening to this on the player profile network, or certainly on uh, fantasy pros, um, we won't get you fired. Don't worry. You can, you can blame it on us. Uh, they just want to know who you guys like and why. So I'll just start it off. I think in any super flex draft at this point, um, it's, it would be silly not to go Caleb Williams. And I don't need to go into all the explanations, but it just seems like the 101 usually has a pretty good insulation for our super flex drafts. We won't belabor that point unless anybody has a different 101 on the clock. Fitz, you are picking at pick two in our Superflex tight end premium draft. Yeah, it's a quarterback rich class, but I cannot bypass Marvin Harrison at 102. I just think he's absolutely can't miss, barring injury. And I think he, it's probably 50 50 whether he ends up in Canton. Like the talent is just that outrageous. And I'm up here in Big Ten country, and I've been watching this guy since he first entered the Ohio State program. Um, it just extraordinarily talented the receiver his dad was except bigger and faster 
And right. uh, maybe he's not quite there as a route runner yet, but the ball skills are extraordinary. The route running is still pretty darn good. Um, you know, I just think this guy has everything in the toolkit, and I, I don't think Malik Neighbors is all that close to him, honestly. All right, Thor, before you pick, um, anything to, like, all this Chris Sims stuff and, you know, you're starting to see a, a little pushback that – uh, Malik neighbors should be. And then, you know, all these that basically that Harrison isn't the one on one. What is your take on the people are bored? So I have to mix up the order um, thing that's going on in social media. Um, well, I mean, the, the those top three receivers would be wide receiver one. A lot of the classes wide receiver class we've had the last five, six years. So it, it's hard to argue with someone that has a different wide receiver one. Like I like Odunze <clears throat> as much as the next guy. Neighbors has a real argument as well. I, I think for wide receiver one, uh, if you have one of those guys beneath wide receiver three, that's where I would argue with you. But you know, the, the order you want to have the top three guys, I, I could see an argument for all three of those guys. Fair enough. With that said, you're on the clock. I took Caleb, uh, <laughs> Pat takes Marvin Harrison and you take quarterback Jaden Daniels. Why? Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to take the cheat code, the Konami code, I, I guess, as our buddy rebar would say, but uh, last year at LSU 50 total touchdowns, 1134 yards on the ground, obviously had nearly 4,000 yards passing the rushing utility that you're going to get with him at the next level from a fantasy perspective in a super flex format. It makes him worthy of a top three pick. D bro, before you pick Jaden Daniels, what's the floor outcome for him? Not the ceiling. Now, Thor did a great job of outlining the upside. What's the, if things go, okay for him um you're looking at some version of rookie season or the first year as a starter of Jalen Hurts which I mean we're gonna he's gonna run probably hover somewhere around 3,000 passing yards and still be a top 12 quarterback just based off the of legs all right you're up on the clock pick four man I was hoping Jaden Daniels was gonna follow to me but I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll snatch up my wide receiver one of this class man I love Malik neighbors I mean he's just Jamar Chase 2.0 I love the size speed yak I mean really there's nothing in his tool bag that he can't provide a passing offense all right Cody before you make your pick over here which um do you uh do you agree with that sentiment that because I know when you were on Rotowire podcast, you were telling me that you actually like neighbors better than Harrison and it was pretty clear cut to you, even though you liked both receivers. It to me, I'm gonna be honest with you, and I just that's why I click Roma Dunze so quickly. I don't really care. Um mm. they're all excellent wide receivers. They all have a little bit different, uh, they all they all have something different in their game that makes them what they are. Um, and I don't really think there's really a conversation, an argument. You know, I have this guy over this guy. It doesn't really matter to me. These guys are all excellent wide receivers. They're all going to go top 10. And in any other draft class, you'd be looking at them as the clear cut wide receiver one, their individual. I just particularly like the archetype that Malik Neighbors brings to the table. Marvin's going to be great. Rome's going to be great. But I just prefer Malik. That's just my favorite type of candy. Theo, before you make your pick, uh, do you share that sentiment that these three receivers are in basically, hey, give me whatever one falls to me tier and will landing spot make you prop reorder them? I mean, explain how you you sort out these three. It's it's I agree with with Thor that like all three are special. I think especially after the after the NFL combine with with Roma Dunze running the four four five at that size with his sort of production we saw at Washington last year. Um, you know, I I I, got, I talked about this yesterday. Um, when, when I potted with Larky about how, like if Malik neighbors lands with an Arizona and, you know, potentially we see a Marvin Harrison jr. With a, a new England, you know, could we change up my order? I'm not so sure, but I, I think that it's, it just makes me feel like the top three wide receivers are just incredibly valuable this year, but I'm pretty set in, in Harrison jr. Neighbors, Adunze, but I have all three as currently, uh, dynasty wide receiver one. So I, I'm, I think that this was the value. I think this is a real uh, conversation for who I select here. Um, I think it's going to be Drake May. Uh, Drake May for me, uh, I feel like he becomes a real value when you get him right here around the 106. I think at the end of the day, this is going to be uh, a player that ends up being the third qu uh, quarterback selected in the draft. And if he ends up in Minnesota, wheels up with the weapons there. All right, guys, uh, just to recap our first round before we take a quick break here, uh, Caleb Williams, I took him first off the board. Uh, Marvin Harrison to Fitz goes number two. Jane Daniels to Thor Nystrom at pick three. Malik Neighbors to Debro. And then, of course, Odunze goes to Cody Carpentier at pick five. And the end of the half first half round here, 
Drake May. Uh, I'm a little surprised he fell this far, but I guess not. You know, I mean, uh, in his his landing spot might determine. All right, everybody, we'll be right back in two minutes with the rest of the ne- well, the next six picks. Hey, you know, people always ask me, what's the World Series of Fantasy? What's the Super Bowl of Fantasy? And it's easy. It's the FFPC. Their signature Players Championship has a $6 million prize pool. And their best ball leagues start in February. And they're the answer to so many questions. Hey, what's the best place to get a Dynasty Orphan? Well, you can adopt a Dynasty Orphan at the FFPC right now. There's more orphans at the FFPC than anywhere else on the internet. That's why we partner with them. So if you want to play fantasy football for low, medium, high stakes, you love Dynasty, you love best ball, you love seasonal leagues, all types of fantasy footballers need to go to the FFPC and remember... Use promo code UNDERWORLD. Promo code UNDERWORLD gets you $25 off your first team. Promo code UNDERWORLD, $25 off your first team, no matter what the format is, at the FFPC. Go get it. Go get it. All right, guys, we're back. Uh, We're here with the Player Profiler and Fantasy Pros Rookie Mock Draft. I'm Alan Zislowski, along with Theo Greminger, Cody Carpentier, and our guests, Thor Nystrom, Debro. And Pat Fitzmorris. Oh, well, okay. Uh, Theo's picking like crazy over here. Um, <laughs> I got I was it just, in. I got it before yeah, we talked about it. Before we make the before Theo makes his a pick officially, because a lot of people are just going to be listening to this. We won't reveal it yet. Thor, you had mentioned earlier that the the these three receivers would be wide receiver one in in many classes if they were by themselves. Will landing spot uh, determine the order how you have your rankings of these three? Um, will that if they're that close, will that be the determining factor when you put out your rankings? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, if one of them gets in a really good one, he gets dropped into a really good situation immediately, and the other two don't. Yeah, you could tip the scales with that. I, I, I again, I think you can make the argument for for each one of those guys. They're just a little bit different. Um, but yeah, I mean, Harrison's at the Harrison Junior's at the top of my board. But if if for instance, neighbors went into the ideal situation, Harrison Junior doesn't go into as good of a situation in, in Dynasty. I might take neighbors above him. All right, that's that's fair. All right, Theo, you were on the clock with the uh, seventh pick. Who are you going to take? Uh, I just put in the pick for Brock Bowers, and despite JJ McCarthy like climbing up uh, rookie draft boards, I think it's still clear that there is a top seven in Superflex with Bowers uh, deserving to be in this range. I could have taken him ahead of Drake May with the tight end premium, Allen. Uh, he's a special talent. This is a guy who had 13 touchdowns as a rookie. Uh, excuse me, as a freshman in the SEC. 31 touchdowns at Georgia. For me, he's a top three dynasty tight end uh, right out the gate. I think he's that good of a player. And when it comes to NFL draft capital, I don't see him getting outside of the top 12. I know there's some people projecting him to Indy at 15, but at the end of the day, I think that somebody's going to pull the trigger well before that. I think he's a stud, and I'm I'm thrilled to get him on any dynasty roster. And then when you get to this sort of uh, tight end premium format, he becomes in a conversation with, whoever we decide is the is the wide receiver three in this class as well. Cody, before you make your pick, Brock Bowers, right? We've seen the first end tight end not always be that fruitful for fantasy. I mean, last year, obviously, uh, tight end one came in the second round, right? I mean, who would have thought that, uh, that uh, Laporta would be tight end one in Dynasty in a lot of rankings? So from your observations, you've watched the tape, you've studied the players. Do you think Brock Bowers is worthy of this mid-first round pick in most Dynasty drafts, rookie drafts? I think he's probably worthy, um, but I'm just not going to be the one that clicks the button. Uh, I'd rather wait. I, I generally don't draft tight ends until middle to late second round, and I think there's only one guy really right now in this year that is probably going to be in that range. That's Javian Sanders. Um, I'm not going to spend my my first round draft capital on a tight end. That's just not how I build rosters. But people are going to do it. Bowers is a super talent. Um, I'm not really worried about his weight or injuries or anything like that. So I think it's a fine spot for him. But yeah. All right. Before you make your pick, really quick with Debro and Fitz, we'll start with Debro. Where do you where are you telling your followers to be on Brock Bowers? I mean, you have QB four possibly on the board in a super flex, right? There's going to have top ten draft capital, and then you have a tight end who, I mean, yeah, I mean, so you're going to fall more on Theo's side or more on the conservative side with Cody? I think you can make the conversation starts for me at 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 pick five. Um, for me, I have him at seventh overall. I do have two quarterbacks ahead of Brock Bowers, but 
I think some of this also goes to how premium is the premium. Is it 1.5 versus there are leagues out there where it's two points per reception. So I think looking at that scoring and some of this also kind of comes down to the build of your particular team. Like I'm a big, like look draft quarterbacks. I don't trade for them. So I have no problem with anybody going with a quarterback over Bowers, but I think it's justified in the conversation starts at five. All right, and quickly, Pat, where are you going to be on that argument versus taking a quarterback in a super flex draft? Where, like Debra said, they're impossible to trade for unless you're like giving something of serious value back versus Brock Bowers. Yeah, I have Bowers at seven two overall, and that's just uh, that's not even with tight end premium. Like, mm. I this guy is just extraordinary. Yeah. When he showed up in Athens, Georgia, I, I remember watching him uh, his first year and and being disappointed that we were going to have to wait so long. Mm to have him entering dynasty drafts uh, really excited about him coming out um, with the talent at wide receiver. It's like almost um, the enthusiasm for Bowers is maybe a little more subdued than it should be wow. actually. And I just, I've, I've still got him ahead of um, a certain quarterback who's probably going to be coming down the pike pretty soon in this draft. See, that's how you don't table talk. Very well done, Pat. You're a professional. Oh, th uh, Cody, Cody, you're up on the seriously? clock here. Seriously? You're going quarterback. You want to be top eight. Debro picked his draft spot before me. He knew what I was going to do if I was here. Eight spots. You want to be in the top eight in these drafts. And JJ McCarthy's the one that falls to me. Brock will fall to some people at some times. Who knows? Somebody else might fall to them too. You want to be in the top eight of your super flex drafts. And at eight, I'm getting the fourth quarterback. He's going to go top 12. He's all but locked in the top 12 of the NFL draft, if not top five, top six. Uh, so we'll see what happens. But I like JJ McCarthy here in super flex. All right, uh, D bro, we agree. That's the uh, by your reaction. It's uh, you know you agree that that was the next uh, right pick, I, guys. I think if JJ McCarthy ends up in uh, it's you know in pick four or five, we're going to see him shoved all the way up in these drafts. This is going to be uh, a lot later than I think uh, he'll go once the actual draft's over. D bro, um, assuming you agree with the JJ McCarthy pick, who are you going to take it? Uh, pick eight was it six seven nine right? Pick nine. I I, I hate that pick. By Cody. I absolutely <laughs> hate that pick. I hate the fact that he did that to me. Um, I, yeah, I love JJ. JJ is actually my QB two of this class. So I'm mm. fully in on it, man. Um, I think you can make a conversation, you know, where do you want to pick him versus the top three wide receivers is fine. Um, but look, I'm not going to sit here and cry in my hands about this. I'm going to take my wide receiver four in this class. Well, excuse me, my water. Yeah, sorry. I'm looking my wide receiver four in this class. And I think there's a conversation to be had where he goes versus a few different guys, but I'll take the top guy at a tier, and I do not care that he ran a 4-4 four -four at the combine. Give me Troy Franklin, baby. I love oh, wow. his game. Wow. I think he is really underrated as a route runner. The speed is real. I think he still could go in the first round, and even if he goes in the top, top second round of the NFL draft, I don't care. The kid okay. is awesome. So... Uh, I, I respect the pick because Franklin was one of those guys that was going early, has fallen late in a lot of the mocks I've seen. Thor, do you think uh, if Troy Franklin, let's say, he, uh, like Debro says, he falls into the top part, the top 10 picks of the second round, would you be comfortable taking him this high? Not as high as Debro took him, maybe, uh, but he's he's starting, you know, this is the range but that you're he would go. Also, a Troy in. Franklin hater, so there's yeah. uh, there Debro loves Franklin. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm just slightly lower on him, but not too far off. I mean, he's my wide receiver seven. Um, but I, I think there's there's reasons to believe the, the risk profile is a little bit elevated there, right? He's got the real thin frame, and then his game's predicated on breaking tackles afterwards, which he was able to do it at Oregon. You know, a very slippery player, but the athleticism, the profile, uh, 82nd percentile. So he's not a freak athlete going to the next level. But I, I like his game a lot. He's very skilled. What well, right, 184, Thor? 184, not 176. Just to throw that out there, buddy. Wait, All what? Right. That's Food he weighs that's, that's or BS. 176. Oh, or at BS. the pro day when yeah, yes. when he was testing, he he was you know real just saying, thin. Just say I'm just saying, okay? Yeah. Well, just here, I, you know, I've, I've made this point before, but when I'm named commissioner of the NFL draft process, <laughs> I will require that when you weigh in, that is the only time you can test. You're not allowed to weigh in if you are not going to test later that day, be it at the combine or the pro day. There needs to be uniformity to these things because you have the kids that will weigh in and then not test. And then the, yeah. at the pro day, they'll do the opposite. I, I don't like it. All right. So, Thor, you're on the clock here with the – this is uh, the 10th pick, right? Yeah. Yes, 10th pick. So, if you're doing a 12-team draft, we're still in the, quote, first round. Yeah. 
Well, sometimes around, you know, I'm, I'm coming to you guys from Minneapolis. Sometimes they jokingly refer to the Vikings as the Minnesota Tigers because of all the LSU guys that bring up. Uh, let's start calling this team the Thorku Tigers. We are adding Jaden Daniels' collegiate teammate, Brian Thomas, to the squad. Yeah. All right. So, Brian Thomas, I mean, is he a locked in first round pick, guys, Theo? I think he's absolutely a lock. I, I think that, that that range with like Jacksonville, Indianapolis, I think somebody in that range in the middle of the, you know, call it like picks 15 to 20 is going to pull the trigger on Brian Thomas, especially after that combine. He's a Cody, stud. Cody, real quick, what's going to be the uh, Vegas number on number of wide receivers in the first round? Do you think if you were setting it at Cody Sportsbook? Probably, probably, I kind of want to put it right at five, but I'd probably say five and a half. I would smash it, over, right, six guys? And a half. Over the, six the and a half. Line to that was six and a half. Yeah, I, I, right. don't know if it's I, I love the under on that. Pat, the under on me too. Yeah, Pat, Pat this is why Cody Sportsbook lost all that money last year. <laughs> <laughs> He's setting Fugazi numbers, you know. I'm uh, setting Pat, the right number. Yeah, Pat, you're um, you're on the clock, man. Oh, well, I was hoping that uh, Thomas might fall after that Debro reach on Troy Franklin. But, um, <laughs> so reach. we are okay. we are we are that. now in the flag planting um, part of the draft, I think. And, and I know Debro is going to come at me here. So I'm taking Speaking up my of bust. shield. Oh, let's go. And I'm going to go. Well, man, there's no. a bust. <laughs> this go is ahead. a guy I am higher on than uh, Debro and Thor, I think. But definitely a lot higher than Debro. I think this guy is in the um, Des Bryant, Mike Evans class as a contested catch artist. Yeah, he's not going to be an elite separator. That's just not his uh, – it's just not the phylum he's in as an NFL wide receiver. Like, I think he can be more of a, an Evans, a George Pickens, who um, is going to make circus catches. Like, he is top fifth percentile, maybe even top one percentile as far as – contested catches and uh the the circus stuff the acrobatics um and he's not slow like i know he ran a four six at the combine but in the gauntlet drill he had a top speed right. of like 20.7 miles an hour which i think was the fastest of any receiver running that drill and florida state used him as a punt returner like you don't put a slow guy back there as a punt returner so i'm really high on him played basketball for tom Izzo at michigan state before he transferred to florida state he's He's a, a rebounder. Yeah. Like he is going to be a uh, you know a, a big, dominant physical receiver for someone. I I can't wait to see what it looks like. Well, the one thing we all have looked forward to, as you saw when you made the pick, Debro yelled out, "Bust!" I mean, he is the most polarizing player of the top twenty players. There's going to be victory lapping no matter what happens, and I'm here for it. I love it, guys. Uh, my pick right here is not necessarily that I think uh, Trey Benson is going to be the you know the pick, but. If I'm if I won my league and I'm picking at 12, I just want whoever the RB won it. So if that ends up being whoever the 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 first running back that goes to Dallas. So whoever that RB1 is, the first guy drafted in a good situation, that's going to be my pick. I know there's better quote receivers and we're in a receiver hungry world, but man, running backs, they still win your leagues, right guys? Thumbs up. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I, back to back cool. Florida State. I like right. both picks. Now, assuming like that, hey, I'm picked at the 201, right? I'm uh, sorry, I'm picking in the first pick in the in the uh, the second round. And I took Caleb Williams. Given what's on the board here, man, uh, I'm going to take the upside of Xavier Worthy. I thought he'd be gone at this point right here. We don't need to go into all that. But, hey, Deber, I saw you gr groan right there. So you're not concerned at all about his, uh, his lack of, quote, size, NFL size? Nope, not worried about it at all. You can't press what you can't catch. And All right. so I, I think Worthy, like Franklin, is an underrated route runner. I love him. I think he's going to go first round of the NFL draft. Okay. Um, before I, uh, Pat makes his pick, uh, uh, Theo, do you agree RB1, whoever that is, should be a first round rookie pick in most drafts? Well, I think that the RB1 is going to get elevated by the landing spot in this draft because we have a couple of, mm -hmm. you know, Dallas Cowboys, yeah, Los Angeles is. Chargers. There's a couple of, of really, really strong landing spots. I have Benson as RB1 right now. And Alan, I think that this the the one two turn in Superflex is is a fine time where you're going to get value out of taking that RB one. I know it's completely beat up. I'm a little bit ahead of where consensus is on this RB class RB class as a whole, um, but I do think there's going to be a couple guys that in that period of time between the actual NFL draft and our rookie drafts, 
they're going to see some steam with a couple of these running backs. Thor, it's a it's a good time to have second round picks, don't you think? Right? It's uh, it's the it, this there's value, and everyone always says, "Oh, second round picks, they don't mean anything," but they're awfully fun before we know that these guys fail. Yeah, for sure. And and in this class, the you know the running back is going to come down a little bit because the wide receiver class is so stacked, which in these drafts is is where it gets fun, like all the way down. But those running, like you were mentioning, who are, the running backs that go in the top three, top three, four running backs off the board, they're going to get immediate playing time. And and some of these guys are going to step in right away and start. And I think Trey Benson, he, he's certainly on the top of my list. He would have been in – I would have been taking him if he, if he had dropped to me in my next pick. All right. All right. Uh, Pat, you're back on the clock with what really is the 2.2 in most 12-team leagues? Yeah, and this is tough. There's a uh, a floor option and a ceiling option here, and uh, I think I'm going to side with the floor. Um, plus, this this team, if this really is a team, it needs a slot guy. So I'm going to go with uh, Lad McConkey. Uh, like, just I- I'm not going to lie. I'm a little bothered that he was never the leading receiver for the Georgia Bulldogs. But um, this guy is just like the the way he moves is pretty special. Like there's, there's little doubt. I think that he's going to be able to get open at the NFL level. Um, just like really locked in solid position, uh, possession receiver from the jump. Cody is uh McConkey, a first round real NFL draft pick in your opinion. I think he's right there. I think he's top 40. Um, it's, of course it's going to be that number. You just brought up six and a half wide receivers in round one. I'm not sure that ends up being the case because I think so many tackles and, uh, defensive linemen are going to go off the board. Um, but there's no reason McConkey's not one of the first, if not the first receiver off the board in round two. All right. All right. Right. Or somebody maybe moves up, jumps up a spot in the first round again. I like that. So you're saying he's right on the cusp. Very right interesting. Cusp. All right, Thor, you're up with what would be the 2.3 in a 12 team league. All right, I don't care. I love this kid. Um, oh, for, for for our audio audience, um, why don't you say the name? Ricky Pearsall. Uh, Ricky Pearsall is a guy who was the wide receiver one going back years and years and years for a guy named Jaden Daniels. We're reuniting someone else now. This is going back to Arizona State with Herm Edwards. Then he goes to Florida. He's the wide receiver one for Anthony Richardson. Last year, he was the wide receiver one for Graham Mertz. Been doing it for a long time. And when you watch him in college live, you appreciated the route running, but the thing that really jumped off the screen is that guy has stupid hands and stupid concentration. He has made some of the best catches we've seen in college football the last three, four years. The catch he had against Charlotte, it's like the it's like Neo in the Matrix. Like how the like how did that happen? How did he do that? Catches it with one hand and then gets crushed by two guys. Um, but then he goes into the pre-draft process and you're like, this guy's a technician with really good hands. He understands leverage, different stuff like that. He has some inside outside versatility. I really like him. And, and, and it turns out he's a great kid too. I interviewed him down at the senior bowl, super nice kid, uh, super sharp, everything like that. But it's like, what is his athletic profile going to end up looking like? Whatever. He impressed us a lot when we were in mobile and then he went to Indianapolis. And even for someone who likes him, I was absolutely stunned with how well he tested Six foot, 190 pounds, 98th percentile Raz. Uh, The comp that I now have for him, I actually stole last night from Debro on our show because he gave me a comp I hadn't heard for Pearsall yet that I thought was perfect instead of of just stealing it from him again here. Debro, tell him who your your comp for Pearsall is. Now our comp for Pearsall. Adam Thielen, baby. Ooh, okay. I I like like that. that. So let me ask you guys. So, uh, and this will be to both of you guys, Thor and for D bro. If you can airdrop him into the perfect situation, which team would that be? Oh, interesting. Um, that's Cody's got the answer for this one. Cody's been on point with this one. Cody, you take this one. Pittsburgh Steelers, baby. There you go. Pittsburgh Steelers. They do need a receiver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Um, I think if if so, here's the other thing. If Arizona trades back down from four, I think that he makes a lot of sense to them at 35. If they go all defense first round and bring him um, back home after he started the career at Arizona State, yeah, interesting. I think I think it makes a lot of sense. Uh, for there, he even makes sense at Washington. I think I think he's Cody was talking about. Um, Cliff would love him. I, I look. I, I think he's going to be a top fifty pick at at his floor. I think after he tested, he's probably going to be a top forty pick. Washington has two picks inside that top forty at thirty six and forty. He'd be fantastic with Commanders. All right, so t- you guys like him, you know that's going to put up our antennas. Cody likes him. Theo likes him. It sounds like um. So good, good ammunition for my rookie dress. I'm going to look smart, and so will you if you're listening to this podcast. All right, D bro, you were on the clock with what is two point four in a twelve team league. 
Cody, I'm not going to let you do it, man. You brought the pain the last pick. I'm going to bring the pain this time, baby. <laughs> Javon Baker, come on down. Man. You're not getting him. You're not getting him, man. Nuh uh. Not going to let it happen, dude. I love Damn Javon it. Baker. He is actually, let me consult the ranks here. Javon Baker is my wide receiver six in this class. Do you think he has a chance uh, yes. to make uh, D bro? Can, can Javon Baker make it into the second round of the real NFL draft? Or do you see him more as a third round guy? I have a third round grade on him, but I think he can make it into the second round. And if you turn on the tape, the guy's got route running chops for days, his size wingspan, all those things are extremely comparable. And my comp for him might sound spicy to some people. Say Unless it. Unless you've watched the tape. It's Chris Godwin, Say it. man. Chris, Chris Godwin. Godwin. I love Javon Baker. All right. I, I like that. Now, Cody, uh, you immediately ran to the podium here. And who did you take? And I have a question for you. Edney Mitchell. Edney Mitchell. And I got him, what, to wide receiver 10 here? 11? Right. Like, I don't right. know. So this, this is my this is my question for you. So let's say Adonai Mitchell makes it into the first round or let's say the top 15 picks of the second round. And Baker is truly a full round later. How do you guys parse that out for rookie drafts? I mean, draft capital does mean something or, you know, I'll start with you, Debro, and then over to Cody is does, does that round difference of draft capital, would that sway your rankings a little bit? Are, so in this assumption, uh, AD goes round one and Baker goes round two, right? Round three. Okay. I was going to say uh, or, AD. Or, or two and three. Two Correct. And three. Okay. Correct. I don't care. I'm still taking Baker over Mitchell. I look at the analytical profile. I look at the skill set. I look at the film. I'm taking Baker over Mitchell. Now, if we're talking about it's, it's round two versus round four, it's a little bit of a different conversation. I'm still probably taking Baker. I trust the talent and trust the process, man. Cody, yeah. where are you on when? Because I know you like Baker as well. So, where are you going to be on these two players? Well, I don't expect Mitchell to be available right here in most drafts. I think a lot of receivers have come off the board. Um, I think we have some takes in here, and I don't think they're bad takes. But I, I like I, I've seen Franklin fall to the late part of the second round. I've seen Coleman do the same thing. People are iffy up and down on McConkey and Pearsall. You're either in or you're way out. So I think you're going to see a lot of the minutia of wide receiver four to wide receiver 10 um, mix and match these guys. I just don't believe Mitchell's going to end up falling this far. Baker is one just like Debro said. Debro loves him. I love him. I think he's number five or number six in the class for me, a wide receiver. Um, as an NFL team, I would want Baker. But for fantasy football right now, I'm, I'm leaning Mitchell. But it's literally splicing hairs. Before Theo makes his pick, uh, percentage chance, Cody, that Adonai Mitchell is a first-round real NFL pick? 35%. Okay, I like those odds. Um, Theo, you are up with what would be the 2.6 in round two of our rookie mock draft with Fantasy Pros and Player Profiler. I was hoping for a second that I was going to get Adonai Mitchell here. It feels like an hour since I've been, been drafting with this, uh, this setup, but uh, I'm going to go with Blake Corum. I think he's comfortably a top three back for me in this class. I, I, the speed score was solid. He got a 97, 4, 5, 3, 40 at 205 pounds. Incredible production at Michigan. And we talk about, Thor was talking about guys competing at the combine. Blake Corum put up 27 reps on the bench. This guy is a beast. This is a guy that NFL teams are going to embrace. And I don't have any worries about the draft capital. I think he's going to go somewhere at the very end of round two or in round three. And then I'm, I'm back OTC, Alan, right here on the snake. Go for it. This is seems like another running back uh, spot for me. And uh, I could go a number of ways here, not to table talk, but there's uh, two or three backs that I think did very, very well uh, at the NFL Combine. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the injury discount here. And I'm going to take a guy that I think that if he never got <laughs> injured, we would have taken him, you know, eight picks ago. And that's Jonathan Brooks of, of Texas. Right. Uh, and, I'm, you know, we're looking to see and make sure some NFL team does select him uh you know i think for me if he falls to uh day three that's a little bit of a red flag with his talent but by all indications i think he's going to be like quorum and like benson somewhere between that end of the second and uh you know middle of the third he'll go right there all right cody before you pick right here pat what do you think are the two best landing spots team wise now that free agency is over for a rookie running back the best two or three Oh man, um, that is a good question. I, uh, like, I don't. <clears throat> oh, sorry, you were gonna say no, no, please. All right, um, I think the Giants have to be right up there just because lack of competition. Um, 
Minnesota wouldn't be bad because I, I don't know if Ty Chandler is ever going to be anything there. And uh, like how long is Aaron Jones going to be effective at, at age 29 or maybe it's going to be his age 30 season? Those those two off the top of my head, I, I think there's an immediate opportunity in Las Vegas um, competing with Zamir White. I, I know Alexander Madison just signed there, but uh, like that's more of a reason why it's a good spot, right? Yeah, exactly. He's just a yeah. jobber. So um, how about how about uh, Dallas guys? Thor, you think Dallas is a good oh, yeah. spot for rookie back? That's for that's sure, the obvious one, right? That's okay. sure. That's the and they're, I think they're Dallas doing a lot of research on this Brooks. running back class. I can tell you. Say that again. They're doing a lot of work on this running back class. Right. Me right. And they, make, guys. they could draft two, right? Like they need they need the bodies in the the running back room. Yep. I think just go ahead and sew Jonathan Brooks into Dallas. I think I think the Cowboys are going to take him. Yep. Him, uh, Jonathan Brooks versus Rico Dowdle for the RB1. I'm here for it, guys. All right. Um, Cody Carpentier, you were back on the clock, which would be, I guess, the 2.8 in our drafts. I, I, I could make a stand right here, but I think the guy that I want is going to make it all the way back to me at 5.5. Five. Uh, and I'll let you guys know when that does happen. So right here, I'm going to go ahead and go wide receiver. And I'm going to go Brandon Rice Ooh, from USC. Okay. Um, I like what Brandon Rice brings to the table. He reminds me a lot of Zay Jones coming out of Eastern Carolina. Zay Jones was disgusting. Um, I think 6'2", 215. He's not getting any pedigree bump. Um, I know Marvin Harrison is what he is, but um, there's also just an ignorance to, I think, what Brandon Rice brings to the table. And I don't think he's going to be a pure alpha, pure number one, but I think he can be a, an elite number two in a multitude of offenses in the NFL. So, um, I think he's going to make a lot of quarterbacks happy or whatever quarterback he goes and plays with, make him happy. Okay, good. Good one there. I, I like the comp to, to Zay Jones. Uh, Debra, before you pick right here, last year, uh, one of the reasons that Sam Laporta got elevated, I guess, and had a lot of production, uh, other side from being a great player, was that was a good tight end landing spot. Is there anyone on the board that you see that could we could call like the best tight end landing spot this year? I think uh, you're looking at the most wide open depth chart. I think it's probably Carolina, yeah. um, because right now, what what alphas do they have? I mean, we got Deontay Johnson, but outside of that, like who's who's demanding targets there? Jonathan Mingo is looking like he's going to be a bust. You drop airdrop a tight end right there. We we know that Canellis is going to use tight ends. I mean, even Kate Otten, who is a passable talent at best, had plenty of top twelve weeks last year. Okay, and Carolina pick 39 in round two might be an interesting one. They picked up that pick from the Giants in that uh, Brian Burns trade. All right, back on the clock, D-Bro. You are at the 2.9. Who are you taking? Man, y'all gift-wrapped my RB1 in this class for me, and I'm not going to let yeah. him fall any farther. This is a lock. Lloyd. Let's come on down. Marshawn Lloyd, baby. I love him. I think that there's a number of landing spots. Like, I, I, I just want to see him go to the Chargers. I want to see him be a, a tone setter. I want to see Harbaugh ride this dude because he's got the talent, he's got the build, and he has crushed the process at every part. All right, the quick follow-up question here is, Marshawn Lloyd, from best of my recollection, didn't have a ton of receptions, but from some of the stuff I've read from you guys is that that's not a concern. Why? Not a concern. Not when I see him catching wheel routes and dusting linebackers and drills and mobile religiously. He closed, I think it was day two and day three of practice with beautiful catches. One of them, I think, was on a whip route and the other one was on a wheel up the uh, the sideline. I have no questions about his talent in the passing game. And I think that he can develop into being a at least average to above average pass protector. So I think he's got a true three down skill set. Thor, does Marshawn Lloyd have a chance of being the first running back off the board in the real NFL draft? Oh, that that one I, I put pretty low odds. It's sure a shot, uh, but I put that probably like 5%. Okay. Um, but does he have a shot at the end of the day to be the best running back from this class? That's the higher percentage. Like, okay. you, you, yeah, that you like the translation of his game to the next level. I, I liked him on the field. The thing that, that shocked me, and I, I'll give credit to Debra on this one, I, I didn't think he was going to test as athletic as he did, and I didn't think he was going <laughs> to run as fast as he did. When we were on our team trip in we Nashville, bet on that. Debro and I made a may, may have made a bet on Marshawn Lloyd's forty at the bar one night. Uh, our boss set Just, the over under. I think it was four five two or something like that. Four, four five, five three. three. Four yeah. five three. And you were taking the over. I took the over. I, I was blasphemous. Dis I was totally disrespecting Marshawn Lloyd, Just, but. Terrible. He he Disrespectful. proved the speed at Indianapolis just like he proved the you know you you asked about the the receiving utility 
he talked to us about that down in Mobile about this is the one thing I want to do here is prove to the NFL I'm a good receiver. I can do it. It's just at the South Carolina offense that he was at before. And then the USC offense last year, they didn't deploy the running backs as a receiver quite as much just because the offense they ran. He showed in Mobile, he was licking people in those routes. So, you know, and then and then very smooth corralling the ball and then turning up field, converting into a run or whatnot. So he he sort of addressed both the questions on his eval. And yeah, I, He's he's got to be a top four or five running back in the class. Yeah, see, that's why we depend on guys like Cody and you guys over at Fantasy Pros because you're actually watching the players where, you know, I'm not watching a ton of college, and I'm sure a, a good portion of our audience is just looking at the numbers as well. So that's why a, a mock draft like this, other than just being a fun exercise, is uh, an actionable piece of intel as our rookie drafts come up. Thor, you're on the clock. What would be the 2.10? Yeah, let's, let's stay at the same position. Let's I, go. Want, I want Jalen Wright. From right, Tennessee, uh, tested as a freak. We knew he would. Uh, a, a Feldman freak lister from multiple years ago. Feldman put him on that freak list when Jalen Wright was like RB four on the depth chart, just because like the tall tales of what he was doing in the training with with the Tennessee program and whatnot. He went out and proved that in Indianapolis, 98th percentile athleticism, four three eight uh, forty. He had the thirty eight inch vert, over eleven feet in the broad. Uh, again, none of that was a surprise. That was at uh, 210 pounds. He There's a, a dual threat aspect to his game. He can catch. He also gives effort as a blocker. Um, and, and that like sort of like look for work uh, type mentality. I, I heard during his interviews at, at the Combine, teams were calling him a dog coming out of it. Like j- just sort of the attitude he has with that. But he was able to ascend to RB1 in the three-headed uh, RB committee that Tennessee has last year. And, and the game really started to jump up at that point, at least what we got to see on tape. The Coming out of the Tennessee offense, you always have to give the standard caveat that it's Mickey Mouse as it gets. They spread the field as far as they can. And so Wright got to, to face some uh, light boxes and whatnot. But you got to see the special sauce of his game, which is that straight line angle erasing speed. When, when he gets that crease going downfield, he starts erasing the angles one by one. I comp him to... Uh, this is sort of near and dear to my heart in this neighborhood in Minnesota. Do you guys remember Michael Bennett coming out of Wisconsin? There you go. I comp him to Michael Bennett coming out of Wisconsin if Michael Bennett was a better receiver. That's oh. that's what I see in Jalen Wright. It, it's it's that burner at that same size, the straight line guy. If he has that, he he's going to take it to the house. But he gives you a little bit of that receiving element and more passing game utility. High praise for for uh, for Wright. Theo, real quick, before we get to Pat's uh, pick at 2.11, Wright versus Lloyd, which one of those guys are you going to prefer and rank higher on the player profile or rookie rankings? We we have both of them pretty high up uh, relative to the market. Uh, I think we have Wright right ahead of Lloyd, but they're they're really neck and neck in, in the rookie rankings. I think this is really, really good value for both of them. Both of them had outstanding speed scores. Both of them did very well at the NFL Combine. Uh, and and both of them have not too much tread on the tires uh, in terms of taking those crazy amount of of carries uh, in a college season. Uh, you know, to to Thor's uh, talk about Lloyd, he wasn't asked to be a receiver at USC, but this is a guy who I love his story. Uh, traveled from Delaware to go to high school at Dematha. Traveled two hours a day, and if anybody's lived in that Baltimore or DC area like like I used to, uh, that's crazy. That's absolutely wild. Uh, so I think Lloyd is really, really a worker, uh, thrived at two colleges. But again, I think that his profile is is going to take the next step up in the NFL. And then Wright has that just incredible speed. Cool. I talk about the splits. Uh, you know, that that 10-yard split for Wright was really, really eye-opening. Uh, I think that some NFL teams might view him as a Devon A-chain this year and how they were going to use him. Hey, Pat, before you uh, – go ahead, Cody. Do you have to jump in there? Go ahead. I was just going to ask uh, Thor – he mentioned the receiving game and said if, it, if his receiving game was if Michael Bennett's receiving game was better, that would be his comp. Are you? Do you? I mean, you you're degenerate when it comes to college football, right? I watch college football, but I, you're in the streets like every you know nine days a week, right? So, thirty four targets in thirty four games does worry me a little bit. Do you see a little more in there that they can pull out of Jalen Wright, or, or or what's kind of your thoughts there translating that to the NFL? Yeah. I- I, I got we got to see it more last year, right? Like it, it, you know, you go before that because of that committee that Tennessee had. You didn't get to see as much usage in some of these other aspects of the game with Jalen Wright. Uh, this year, Cody, to your question, is where I got to see more of that. That was where this past season, twenty-two at twenty-five uh, catches yeah. with the targets, and then one point three three yards per route run. 
decidedly above average in this class. I also love his elusive rating, you know, both when he's the runner, but also as, as the receiver. Again, you give the standard caveat of, of he's facing some of those boxes. They're a little bit lighter, but he absolutely makes you miss, and he's running through the arm tackle. Because when he starts going at at high vol, <clears throat> excuse me, at high velocity, that's where it's the power. It's the the mm-hmm. speed plus force, whatever that that Einstein equation or whatever it is. He he gets that arm breaking tackle power from that force that he's running with. But yeah, I, I think this is an ascending prospect. Lots of tread on the tires because of the the the, the committee that he's coming out of. So I think that projects really well to the NFL. He's Jameer Third. Gibbs without the route running chops. Is he, a th- yeah, is he like a third that. round pick, guys, or is he more of a day three pick? Third round. Okay. I, I think I, I have round three grades on Wright and Lloyd. Yeah, yeah I, I, I wouldn't even be like there's people that you know, you look at some of these mock drafts when they start to go to three rounds, and and some of them you don't see a running back go until the third round. I do think we're gonna get a running back in the second, and I think there's mm-hmm. a shot that we get two. Uh, Jalen Wright is absolutely in play to be one of the top two running backs in this class. I mean, just the, the profile that he put up, the athletic testing profile with what we saw last year on tape, that's, he, he has entered into that phylum. So there's a shot he could go in, in the late second, but I, I think he's going early round three. If I was to say the top half of that round three, you, the listener could have done no rookie study tuned into this mock draft and be up to speed, what everyone's been doing for the last 10 months a year. So that's, that's why I love this. All right, Pat, um, thank you for patiently waiting. You were on the clock right here. We're towards the end of round two in our 12 team league at two eleven. Who's it going to be? Well, Alan, uh, Thor has really been putting me on tilt here. First, he brought up the name <laughs> a little while ago of Graham Mertz, which, uh, to <laughs> university of Wisconsin fans, that is just fingernails on a chalkboard. <laughs> then he snaked me on Jalen Wright. So, uh, I'm a little, I'm bad, Fitzy. I'm, I'm a little irritated here, but you know what? I'm going to take Michael Penix. Uh, I, I think this is decent value with him. Uh, after two ACL surgeries, he is not going to be a Konami code guy, but he is um, a really good pocket passer. And with all sorts of arm talents, I think in the right system, he could thrive in the NFL. So um, like the equivalent of a late second round pick in a super flex format, I, I think this is pretty solid value on Penix. Yeah, I think that if uh, Mike well, and let me just throw this out to the general. Actually, I'll throw it right back to you, Pat. If my if Michael Penix ends up being a late first round pick, even if it's on a team that has one of those bridge quarterbacks, we have to really consider taking him in, in a similar spot. We took Kenny Pickett a couple years ago in our rookie drafts, right? I mean, if the guy is slated to start. I think so. Yeah, like I th- I think the draft capital is sort of going to validate uh, Penix as maybe more of an early second round guy in. Um, super flex drafts maybe even late first so uh assuming he goes late first and i i think he will um yeah i i just feel like 211 is too slow or too because, low for him because we're in a room with professional podcasters we've been very efficient so we're gonna we're gonna get the people another half round if that's okay with everybody we're running about 45 minutes in and uh we're gonna get uh, you in and out of three rounds of, of mock draft in an hour. What, I don't think that's ever been done in the history of uh, fantasy football podcasts with all the, the blabbermouths we have in our podcasting world. So congratulations to you guys. All right. Um, I think for the same reasons that Pat gave, I'm going to take uh, Bo Nix here, guys. Uh, it seems like even though that we don't love him, that the NFL is going to make him a second round pick. And if he's a second round pick, in you know, my super flex drafts, I want that guy. There was one time in a super flex draft, I was sitting there, and who was the? Uh, there was some running back that I don't even think is in the league anymore. I was debating between him and Jalen Hurts. I was like, but Carson Wentz is in the way, right? Jalen Hurts is a dead pick, and I actually took the running back, and I've been you know throwing up in my mouth ever since. I forget who the running back even was. So I think anytime a uh, quarterback at second round real draft capital. We have to take that guy in round three of our, or the end of round two of our super flex drafts. Um, D bro agree with that philosophy. And again, forget the player itself, but if, if Bo Nix is a second round pick, we have to consider him any time in the second round of our real, of our rookie drafts. Yeah, I think so. I mean, especially in a super flex format, if nothing else for as soon as he starts, even if you don't like the player, it's just free equity. Then you just trade him away. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. You can at least recoup a third round pick if he gets a couple spot starts. And on the on the turn, I'm going to take Roman Wilson. Uh, Cody, you educated me a little bit on Roman Wilson, so I'll let you do a little bit of the deeper analysis. What's the upside case for this player? 
I mean, he's dirt nasty. I mean, he was the one that they gave the opportunity to at the end of practice, the senior bowl, to go one-on-one with Quinion, and he made a one-handed catch. He's clean. He's smooth. Um, and getting him, you know, outside of the top ten at the wide receiver positions, you know, it it shows the depth of the class, I think, in, in totality. Um, he's going to do a lot of things right, I think, in the NFL. Uh, I think he has a little bit of a Monroe to his game. He's a little bit of Jackson Smith and Jigba to his game. Not the full-fledged ability to be a top-five guy in Dynasty, but I think there's a little bit of those nuances in his game that are going to make him a long-lived NFL wide receiver. All right, before Pat picks at the 3.2, Thor, Roman Wilson, what's the the most likely uh, round that he'll get drafted in, and what team would you like to see him drafted in to, to maybe reach that upside that Cody was talking about? I'll say uh, <clears throat> late second, probably, um, to, to early third. But I, to me, he's he's more towards the second round. Uh, I, I like Roman Wilson a lot. He was on the top of my board at the point that he just got taken. Roman Wilson last year. 97 percentile receiving grade against single coverage roman wilson 90th percentile separation percentile and the 93rd percentile against single co- separating against single coverage and and cody was sort of alluding to this but you know the, the constitution of that michigan offense it was run on first down run on second down which is the reason that jj mccarthy get you know gets so nitpick because the volume stats whatever but they, they, when they were throwing it was in the high leverage situations it was third and long and different stuff like this Roman Wilson was always the guy that they were looking for. And he came up with big play after big play after big play after big play. I, I think about him, you have the speed. He ran a, a 4-3-9 in Indianapolis. But the fluidity that he has on the field, I, I think it's just as impressive as that. He just sort of glides around the field. Very, very good route runner. Uh, I compare him to uh, another guy that came out of the state of Michigan last year. Uh, maybe this guy went a few picks higher than Roman Wilson, but he, he went around where I'm going to rank Roman Wilson on my board, Jaden Reed. Oh, that's a, that one. Yep. Hard to, to, to throw any shade on that comp right there. Pat, you're up. What would be the 3.2 in the last round? You took 12 inch Phoenix, right? Oh, he's 10. He, he measured it at 10 and a half inches. That was right. That was right. A little, yeah. little short of where I thought it was going to be. Now, um, so 3.2, you're up. Well, uh, I better make this a size pick then, Alan. So I'm going to go with <laughs> Braylon Allen. Very good, Pat. And, go. um, yeah, so Thor will attest that I'm not a complete homer on Braylon Allen, that I've got some doubts about him. I, I don't know what he's going to do as a pass catcher in the NFL. Um, he, he gets dinged in games a, a lot more than you would expect for a guy who goes like 235, 240 pounds. He didn't run at either the combine or his pro day. Uh, Although I'm not sure why, because he's actually pretty fast for a big dude. Um, But Braylon Allen is just a unit. I think he's got more 100-yard rushing games than any other running back in this class. And that's pretty fascinating, considering that Braylon Allen might be one of the youngest players in this entire draft class at any position, maybe the youngest. Um, So I don't know. Like I think there's major early down potential for this guy. Uh, he, He is like, a, a pretty he's not Jonathan Taylor he doesn't have that sort of footwork or vision but he's a, a pretty good knockoff as far as a really powerful dude who is not going to be brought down by an arm tackle this is making me sick that I traded a third round pick for Gardner Minshew during the season even though that's you know it's still pretty good value there's so many good players in this third round and uh Thor you're up next with the 3.3 I'm going to go with Jatavian Sanders here at Texas. Nice. Uh, feels like he's he's fallen down a little bit. Maybe the the panel a little bit pessimistic after the 469 at uh in Indianapolis. And I'm not oh, by a, the way, just sorry, just to, for our listening audience, I want to let everybody know this is yeah. tight end two. So Brock Bowers went in yeah. in the first round now, 3.2, tight end two. That's amazing value for tight end two in any class. I interrupted. Sorry. Yeah, uh, you know, in, in Bowers, obviously at, at the very, very top, and then you have the enormous tier break, but Sanders is in the tier two by himself, you know, and then you have another tier break, and then, you know, whether you want to argue for Cade Stover, Theo Johnson, but this tight end class sucks past <laughs> Brock Bowers, uh, and I don't even really consider Brock Bowers a, a tight end. I consider him more of an offensive weapon, but we don't need to get into that spiel. But as far as Jatavian Sanders goes, the thing he is not going to do at the NFL is block. He stinks at it, but you can put him in the slot. You can move him around. And he's a very, very skilled receiver with an awesome set of hands. I believe last year he had zero uh, drops 
And in conjunction with, I believe, the most explosive plays in this tight end class when you look at that. So you have that different element in, in a league like this where it's tight end premium. Uh, getting the second tight end here in round five, I'm going to take that every day. And by the way, props on your Yiddish spiel. He said it very well. A lot of times, you know, you goyim, you don't say it right. You say <laughs> spiel, and I, I, I cringe. So good, you, you must be a lot of, a lot of uh, Yiddish friends. So I, I'll give you a prop there. Debro, you're up on the clock, 3.4. All right. Well, um, I'm going to kind of lean into tight end premium slash not lean into tight end premium. I thought Pitts was going to go here when he made the, the size joke, uh, but I'm going <laughs> to plant a flag here. I'm going to go with my dude. Uh, let's go Johnny Wilson here. Uh, I'm curious Ooh. where his NFL draft capital uh, comes down at, but as a player that alongside Keon Coleman outproduced him in multiple metrics, he has the size to play outside. I think, look, you put this guy – as a 50 50 guy playing 50 percent in the slot and boundary i think that he could eat up corners he's too fast for linebackers he's too big for nickels if he does move to tight end somehow in the nfl because we've heard you know rumblings we all wanted to see him work at tight end at senior bowl it did not happen but even as a boundary receiver i think johnny wilson can win that way and he tested like a freak too like guys that size should not be able to move that way so johnny wilson come on down before we move on to Cody's uh, pick at 3.5, what round do you project Johnny Wilson to go in, in the real NFL draft? I think he's probably going to be, I've got a round three grade on him. I think that if a team falls in love with him, I think he's probably somewhere around three, maybe goes around four. It just depends on where NFL teams come down on him. All right. This year's Puka Nakua, right? That we're looking for oh, someone. Like that. I, I, I haven't thrown that moniker on anybody right now. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I was kind of like goofing on that. We're always looking for this year's Cooper cup. Then it was this year's Puka Nakua. Then it's this year's whoever this year's tank Dell. That's going to be another popular, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, cliche. All right, Cody 3.5. Uh, this is going to be your last pick. We're only going to do three and a half rounds. Uh, so who's it going to be? Lame, lame, lame. Um, Keep damn, going, that sucks because Keep I got six dudes in my, I got six right. dudes in my queue for the next two picks. Yeah, All right. So damn. this will do this will do for the, for the, Back half for the picks three seven on. We'll do lightning round. You make the pick. You get ten words. Let's yes. go. Then, okay. Yes. All right. Okay. Let's go. go. Let's do it. Let's do it. Ten All words right, cool. doesn't mean ten minutes, Theo. You understand? You got five. It. Five, you got it. five five. Minutes Spencer per Rattler. Pick? Okay. Cool. I All need right, a quarterback. So. Give me Spencer Rattler, South Carolina. All right. You're allowed to talk over Spencer Rattler. This isn't the lightning right. round yet. <laughs> this is my take right here. This is my one singular take. I think when you look back at this draft, Spencer Rattler will be a better quarterback than both Penix. Phoenix and Knicks. Oh yes, Period. yes, I love that. I have a, I have Rattler ranked over both of them, Cody. I'm with you as you should. Very quickly, Cody, what is it about Rattler's game that you like better than those other guys that are projected to go higher than him? I don't think that those guys are terrible. I just think that I love that Rattler has grown the last two years going to South Carolina. He's went through the he's he's gone through the ringer after transferring from Oklahoma. He's saw the highs, he's seen the lows, and he's growing back up. I love. I was at the pro day last week. His pro day was good. Um, I do think there's a little bit that he struggles with, you know, out of the pocket on the run um, against the grain, but that's fine. I think he's going to be a very good NFL quarterback. Super flex here. We're talking middle of third round. I love me some Spencer Rattler here. All right, that's an interesting pick right there. I think he. Do you think he's a third rounder or a second rounder in the real NFL draft? Quickly, I think there's a chance he gets drafted ahead of Bo Nix. All right, fair enough. Um, Theo, you're up at the 3.6. Who's it going to be? I'm taking Zayvon Legette here, and I understand that we have some red flags about the breakout. He's an older guy. He's 23 years old. Uh, but at the end of the day, guys, this, he had crushed the combine. 43940, 40-inch vertical, 6'1", 220. Someone's going to take him in the second round, and I think that his floor is the, is the third round. I, I have, I'm very confident that he's going to be a day-two pick. Uh, so I think at this point in a, in a, in a rookie draft, I, I'm willing to roll the dice here, despite some of the red flags. And then I'm going to push back a little bit on what Thor said. I have one tight end that I, I want to flag plant uh, that I'm really into right now. And I think he also helped himself a ton at the combine. And that's <laughs> Ben Sinat. Four, six, eight, 40, ran a faster 40 than Jatavian Sanders. 40-inch vertical, yep. led Kansas State in receiving yards, led Kansas State in receiving touchdowns. Had a very high A dot, uh, and with that sort of athleticism, I think he checks off a lot of boxes that he could be a productive fantasy tight end. I'm done, Alan. Not saying anything. No, no, I'm, it's I'm, not AJ Barner, Thor. Look at that. 
And by the way, you did a great job. Great economy of words right there. You're a pro, there you Theo. There You're you a pro, Theo. All right. Um, you are at, we're at pick 3.8, Cody. Who's it going to be and why? I, I want to pick Jalen Polk here, but I'm not. I'm going to go Will Shipley, running back Clemson. They've registered him as a 4.39. I don't know if I believe that or not. 4.44 four, four would be good enough for me. Will Shipley, 85 receptions, Clemson. Debro, you're on the clock at 3.9. This guy was massively productive. I think he goes round three, round four, and he's a target earner from day one. Malik Washington coming oh. down, man. I love Malik. Uh, got done watching his tape. Uh, my comp for him was Pop Douglas as a guy. Look, he was 11th in yards per route run, second in receiving grade last year. Love his game. All right, good. I like that one right there. It seems like that Washington has a chance to be a riser and make it up to the early third round from everything I've been uh, hearing, reading. We'll see what happens with the draft capital. Thor, you are up at the 3.10. Late third round picks, man. There's One of these guys is going to hit. Who's it going to be? Uh, yeah, I, I had Malik Washington in my queue. I was ready to insta-draft him right when D-Bro <laughs> didn't. Uh, he foiled me again, D-Bro. Uh, since we're on the last pick right now, I'm, I'm gonna, just going to take a my guy. I love Kamani Vidal. Oh, I love it. I think Kamani Vidal is going to be a love steal it. on day three for somebody. He's going to come in right away and be the one B of a committee. Uh, sort of like Jalen Warren, a guy who, when he came out of Oklahoma State, finished number two in the FBS and forced missed tackles. Kamani Vidal, inter interestingly enough, in the same frame last year at Troy, finished number two in the FBS and in forced missed tackles. He was another guy when we talked to him in Mobile. He said he wanted to show the NFL that he could receive. At Troy, every year he was around 20 catches or so, but it, it wasn't like pounded with targets. And he he showed that that utility as well in Mobile, that he can be a, a, a smooth receiver, different stuff like that. Then he goes to, to Indianapolis and tested as 88th percentile athlete, which I think surprised a lot of people. Uh, the agility is very, very good with Kamani Vidal, change direction very fluidly. Uh, we'll take Kamani Vidal here. Is that Troy College like in upstate New York? No, it's uh, Where's Troy, Alabama. Troy, Alabama. Okay, I was like Troy, man. Thorpe. I I went to Albany, New York. Troy was like a like a almost like a Nassau Community College in Long Island, Theo. Right <laughs> there, you go. There you go. Right, right. around the corner from put, it. <laughs> put some more sauce on it, Thor. Tell people where you have Kamani ranked in your RB ranks. I know I this because we already we already ran through this on the uh, Fantasy Pros NFL Draft Show, but people need Kam to know Kamani Vidal is my RB five. He came and played right away. I uh, yeah, just had a dominant career down in the G5 for four years and then just tested really well. So I think people are sleeping on him right now. There's right, a well, little, not, I know we're not supposed to interject here because this is lightning round, but there's a little bit of steam that the Los Angeles Chargers and Harbaugh like Kamani Vidal. There's a lot of Chargers could people totally kind of see liking that. them. Could yeah. see He's it. very similar to Corum, you know, and yep. you might get a, a bit more receiving utility out of Mr. Vidal. I like the size at 5'8", 215 as well, guys. That's like, you know, that's that's the bowling right ball. build for a, a bowling ball. Good good analogy there. All right, Fitz, uh, 3.11, your last pick. Um, who's it going to be? Ray Davis, tough, versatile, productive, formerly homeless kid. Um, just a dog. Like, I, I think he's a good player. It reminds me a little of Josh Jacobs, who was also formerly homeless. And uh, just like super tough player. I think he's going to be productive. Fair enough. All right, guys, I'm going to take a walk with me down Narrative Street real quick. Bucky Irving reminds me a lot of what happened with um, Kyron Williams when he was, you know, he was supposed to be a highly uh, touted draft pick, doesn't test well, falls down the rankings. In the end of the third round, I like pass catching running backs with some upside here. But again, I'm not married to it. There's a lot of guys you could throw a dart at here. Um, just real quick, Theo, I'll let you have my one liner here. Bucky Irving, I know you liked him, then you didn't. What's the current state of affairs, your mindset on the player profile around? rankings with Bucky Irvin I think right here is fine when we're talking about the end of round three it's just it's hard for me to get excited about that profile yep. knowing that he's going to be selected on day three led the nation in running back receptions uh but I expect him to be faster and you know a little bit of red flags with that sort of speed score that sort of speed score Guys like him and Estime, you got to take him down a notch. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it happened with Kyron as well. So we'll, we'll see. All right, so we're just going to go around the uh, around the horn one time quickly, guys. Uh, I want you to tell me your favorite pick on the board from a value-wise. And also, and by the way, don't worry about offending Cody he, he, when you pick the worst pick as well, all right? <laughs> he'll he'll understand. All right, D-Bro, we're going to start with you. Who is, and you can't pick anything <laughs> your own, what was the best value pick on the board and your least favorite value pick? I, I I'm gonna give Cody some love here. I love where he got Spencer Rattler. Uh, I, I'm with him on the, him being the QB five of this class, and to get him there, if he goes, 
if he surprises and he goes above Knicks, he goes in the third round. I think he's going to get uh, an opportunity. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll give uh, Fitzy a little bit of crap here. I'm just not a Braylon Allen guy. I think that he was, unfortunately for Braylon Allen, if you would have dropped airdropped Braylon Allen into the 1990s, he'd have been a first or second round pick in the NFL draft. And people would be talking about, oh, we're going to feed him 350 touches, 300 carries per year. It's just hard for me to see where he's going to fit outside of being like an early down red zone compliment to a committee in today's NFL. All right. Fitzy's revenge. Your turn. Uh, best value pick, worst <laughs> value pick. All right. Good. I get to shit on D bro. And it's yes, Troy Brandon. Franklin pick at Here ninth overall. <laughs> Troy Franklin is my wide receiver nine in this class. Yeah. And then obviously I've got four quarterbacks and a tight end, um, you know, ahead of him. So I just thought that was a little early. And I, I think, Cody really got value on AD Mitchell sliding to, to 17th overall. I was going to, I was de debating between Lad McConkey and Adnai Mitchell at 13. And for Cody to get him back at 17 was really nice value. Cody, I'm going to ask you a different question. Which player picked in the third round of our draft? So basically, you know, the last, you know, let's say the bottom three rounds of this board right here has a chance to ascend similar to what, you know, we saw Tank Dell, Puka, and again, not the same player types, but which one of these players you think that when we, we look uh, a year from now, we say, man, I wish I would have taken them at like pick 10 in my real rookie draft. It's not even close. It's Ricky and Baker and McConkey. any three of them. I like all three of them. They're, they all have opportunities. McConkey's dirt nasty. If he can stay healthy, he'll have a ton of opportunities. Ricky Pearsall, like I said, in Pittsburgh, I would love that 120 targets. Sign me up. And Javon Baker's the dog of them all. So I like them all. But I do want to say my least favorite pick because you left that one out, Alan. You kind of threw me a screwball oh. there. Yep, yep. Troy Franklin, that was the worst pick of the draft. Sorry, D bro. Oh, um, <laughs> I had him wide receiver four at one point, good. but, but the, the thing is, before that, I had him wide receiver nine. My boy Matty Kiwum decided to tell me to go back and watch, and I saw a little JMO in there. And then at the, the combine, um, he graded as the worst uh, on field participant at the combine as far as the routes and gauntlet go. So he took a little bit of a tumble for me, and I think you could get him at the end of round two. So, yeah, and the gauntlet the drill. He was swerving around like me coming out of a bar in college late on a yes. Saturday night. Do we care <laughs> about the gauntlet versus his film? That's all I'm going to ask. Uh, we got... care about we care about the routes though. The routes on the field. He, the gauntlet was the worst gauntlet of the last two years, maybe the last five years. I don't care and about the on-field drill. The, I don't. On, you should. You should. I don't. You should. All right. And the on-field routes were equally as bad. If you've stuck with us this long, audience, let us know also, by the way, but while we're going through this exercise, who had the best pick? You can say the player. You don't have to call out Debro by name. And, of course, the uh, the worst pick, right? Hey, by the way, Debro, I like when people crap on my picks because those usually means that you end oh, up being right. It. I, I'm yes. just ready for Troy Franklin to just set the NFL on fire. I'm here for it. All right, Thor, you're up. You know the drill. Who is the best value pick in your opinion? And let's throw some cold water on one of these picks on the board. Uh, the best value pick, of course, was JJ McCarthy with the second oh, pick in wow. the, in the second round. Uh, if, if, you know, like if the thing had gone a little bit different and I had one of the picks later in the first round, I, I would have popped JJ McCarthy there. So getting him in this, the second pick of the second round was good. And then as far as the worst pick, you mean the worst pick outside of the Troy Franklin pick, right? Just yeah, well, right. I think, <laughs> I think we've mowed that grass a few times. We've already. established. Okay. We've established well, it. run well, it over again. C Cody's getting too much love. So I'm going to bring <laughs> him down a peg. The, the worst pick outside of Troy Franklin is a guy that also came out of the, uh, the pack 12, Brennan Rice. I, I think Cody's way higher on Brennan Rice than I am. I, I wouldn't have taken him, but I, I love the value that he got on McCarthy. All right, Theo Greminger, you know the drill. Um, I want you to say who you, but Theo loves every pick, right? Because no, you no, love every no. rookie. I, I don't, I do not love every, I do not love uh, every rookie, Alan. I want to clarify that, but I will give uh, credit to Pat. I think that the uh, Michael Penix pick where he got him uh, is going to look a little silly uh, in a couple of weeks, uh, you know, after the NFL draft, because I think that he has a chance to slide into the back end of the first round. And if that happens, I think that he's probably going right around the turn uh, so Pat got him at a significant discount. Love where Cody got Adonai Mitchell. Again, that's a player where I think he's going to be a top, let's call him a top 40 pick with a chance to be selected at the end of the first round, early second. Uh, that was a guy that when Cody and I did uh, a, a draft like this on his show, he went 10th overall. So Cody got him there at a discount. And then, yeah, the, the Troy Franklin uh, pick, I think that was a little bit early for Debro. It was a little flag planty. D bro. I like Troy Franklin, but I think having it taken him there ahead of uh, Brian Thomas, uh, I anticipate that Brian Thomas is going to go 20 picks ahead of him 
uh, potentially in the NFL draft. I want to see uh, Brian Thomas run a full route tree. There you go. <laughs> can we get? Can we ever get that? No, yeah. we'll never get that ever. No, no we'll we never won't. get that. I'm Very like, quickly, guys. Uh, my Debo, you're going to like this one. My favorite pick was your Marshawn Lloyd pick. I, I still believe that uh, he's going to be the guy that ends up falling to the right situation, and we're going to be possibly looking at him early in the second round. So I love that one. And I'm going to say to myself, after hearing Cody's explanation of Rattler, that the worst pick in the draft was my pick of Bo Nix, that little PP arm I saw at the, uh, at the con. I mean, I've heard people say he's got a big arm uh, fits. W why was he look like he was short arming every ball at the combine? Yeah, that was, that was kind of strange. That was not a great performance for him. I, I don't know. I mean, like I'm just, I'm confused about what people think Knicks is going to be in the NFL. Like, I've, I'm just, I don't know if I totally buy his NFL future. All right. We gave people a lot of value today. So what we're going to do is you're going to let them know very quickly in 12 seconds or under what's the most important thing that you're working on right now that you want them to pay attention to. We're going to start with my friend Thor Nystrom. Uh, check out the new uh, Fantasy Pros NFL Draft Show with me and Derek Brown on the Fantasy Pros Dynasty podcast feed. All right, if you're not subscribed to that, you uh, it's like you almost don't play fantasy football. D bro, what do you want people to pay attention to that you're working on right now? Uh, I well, I'll just copy and paste what Thor said, and I have a mock dropping on Wednesday on Fantasy Pros as well. All right, I'll be looking forward to that one. Is it a real NFL mock or a like a dynasty or uh, like a fantasy no, real, mock? Real NFL mock, uh, first round. Okay, first who's going to be the, the – It was. will Troy Franklin be in that first round? He is not, but I think people could be surprised uh, how high Brian Thomas goes because I like the fit for a certain team in the middle of the first round. Fitz, what is, should everybody be looking for from you in the next couple of days, few weeks? Debro and our colleague Andrew Erickson and I have um, – we're doing articles on our favorite – underdog best ball values right now those two have posted their articles already and i'm the cleanup hitter i'll be coming with mine in a day or two i'm not saying anything hot takey here but i like that guy andrew man i've been pay i've been watching his stuff for uh, uh i just got onto him lately he's doing a great job so shout out to him cody uh we know you're traveling to all over the country to all these pro days what should everybody be looking for that you're working on the draft rankings.com, uh, the draft rankings podcast. It's a new podcast, new site, new all that stuff over wherever you get podcasts, where you, wherever on YouTube, the draft rankings.com. Theo Graminger, you get one plug. Remember, one, you can't plug every show on the player profiler network today. So pick one, and what's it going to be? My own show, Dynasty Life. Check it out. I have Jax Falcone on tomorrow. Uh, and the rookie guide uh, that should drop in April. You get my rankings, get Cody Car Carpentier's rankings, get John Lobb's rankings, Matty Kiewum's rankings, and also Jackson Chalk uh, from the Undroppables are going to do a combined rankings as well with write ups from a ton of people, including Alan Sislowski, uh, Cody and myself, Josh Larkey, Matt Kelly, uh, Memphis Young, you name it. Everybody over at Player Profile is contributing to this. It's going to be really, really good. Word has it that Chat GPT wrote half of that. Is that true? Uh, we have no chat GPT generation, un unlike everything over at RotoWire, which I hear has gone to a full chat GPT mo model on all of the player write ups. All right, you can run chat GPT, bro. Come on, Cody. You think I can't? Come on, bro. Look at look at guys. I, I would like to, I'd like to give myself a shout out. Look at how clean yeah, I don't know, the bro, screen looks. Look how, you can't do chat look GPT. At how, look, D -bro, that was the joke, D bro. You got it. That there's no chance that it's chat GPT. I'm just letting people out there know. Yeah. All right. Um, I would buy the chat GPT <laughs> rookie guy, by the way, just so you know. All right, guys. Um, I'm oh. doing the road wire dynasty podcast every Friday. We come out with a new episode <laughs> and you, um, everyone here has been on it, but Thor D bro, uh, Fitz, I'm going to be reaching out to you cause you guys are going to be scheduled on that one. I'd love to have you on. I get you in and out of there quick. You could do it on the run. Appreciate you guys. All right, everybody. That's the player profiler versus fantasy pros mock. Let us know in the comments. Uh, like I said, best pick, worst pick. And we'll see you next week with another Sonic Truth podcast when the Podfather is back. Hey, I want to thank you for being part of this broadcast. If you have any thoughts on it, leave a comment. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like. And if you want to see more shows on the player profiler channel, subscribe to it. That's how we know you want more.